You are listening to ChartingWealth.com's weekly review and forecast for the week beginning Tuesday, the 5th of July, 2016. What do we see going on? Well, we're first going to approach the three indexes that we review and then gold. We're going to look at them on the weekly chart. We do this only once a week. We're going to see where the biggest wave that we look at is going. We're then going to talk about the daily chart, what went on throughout the course of the week. And then on top of all that, we are going to look at what moved the markets and the news that actually affected things this last week and what might be affecting the markets when they reopen again Tuesday morning after the 4th of July holiday. Let's jump right in. What do we see going on? IYY is the total market fund that we review. It is all the stocks in the stock market, and it shows us what's going on systematically, system-wide, what's happening. Well, what do we see? Very interesting. Three down weeks recorded on our Hinken Ashi-type candlesticks, all of them showing indecision. The week before last was the most indecision, a spinning top. We have a bit of a top-heavy hammer ending the past week on the 1st of July. And basically, we have three weeks in a row of down movement. Now, what's really interesting is when the week ended on the 24th of June, what occurred is there was almost a crossover in the total market, and then it bounced back off on the signal line. That is, the MACD bounced off the signal line. Nonetheless, the derivative oscillator moved over, and it is currently in a negative position, even though the MACD bounced off the signal line and is diverging, although slightly. What really occurred? Well, we're going to break that down and look at what happened over the course of the week. What occurred? Well, of course, we saw at the end of last week, that is the week ending the 24th of June, and I'm recording this on Friday afternoon, the 1st of July, so forgive me. If I'll try to give you just the dates instead of trying to relate it to the week. What we saw happen on Friday, the 24th of June, after the Brexit, huge down candle that on that daily chart. Then on Monday, another huge down candle. Then we saw the market recovering, and actually on the daily chart, The market closed at the end of the day on Friday higher on our Hikinashi candlesticks than when it started moving down. A total recovery. Remember how we warned you, jumping into a dropping market, trying to catch a falling knife will cut you. And anybody who did not listen and jumped into the market thinking it was going to keep going down got stung. Now we had a question Was there going to be simply a dead cat bounce in the market roll back over again? Well, it hasn't done that. In fact, on Friday, it crossed over on the daily chart going up and actually at the same time turned into a positive on the derivative oscillator. The MACD crossed over the signal line and derivative oscillator became positive after four days of up movement, three of those being nice size, Open box, green candles with wicks on top, which means all up movement on our Hikinashi type candlesticks. Now, as an aside, we did a great training for you a few days ago. You can find it at the website chartingwealth.com. It's the last training that we put up on Hikinashi candlesticks. I think it was the last. It might have been next to last. Check that out. See it. You will really get a lot from it. We love Hinkanashi type candlesticks. They give us the average pace of price movement. Extremely important. That is where we are as far as understanding what's going on with the weekly chart in particular. We have a roll. We have, you know, the, the price movement is going down our Hinkanashi candlesticks, but lots of indecision. And we have a bounce off. What was going to be a, a, a literally called authentic rollover. We haven't had that happen yet because of all the up movement Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the week ending the 1st of July. So very interesting how things recovered from the Brexit after that. Now, again, people could have been trying to take advantage, short a bunch of things, clear out a bunch of stops, and really take advantage of folks. Who knows? We just watch it happen, and we use what the market's doing to tell us what to do. We don't second-guess the market. We don't have to figure out why it does what it does. 
We just have to figure out what it's doing and do that. All right, what do we see going on with the S&P 500 as represented by SPY, an exchange-traded fund that tracks the big stocks in the S&P 500, all that volume. Well, it looks somewhat similar. It's not always the same. Somewhat similar. In fact, less indecisive than the total market. There are three decent sized down candles. They still, they're red down candles, filled box. They still have a lot of upwick on the last two, two week, uh, the last two candles for each week, the week ending the 24th of June and the 1st of July. We had the MACD crossover going down on the S&P 500 at the same time that the derivative oscillator crossed over, typically a good sign for that. And then with all of the up movement later in the week, ending the week ending the 1st of July, it crossed back over going up. Now, I would not call that a hard crossover. Derivative oscillator is still negative. If the market starts really moving down over the course of the next week, beginning the 5th of July, that will slide our MACD crossing over the red signal line just barely will actually slide back over going down. So let's pay attention to that, realizing the last three weeks down movement on the S&P 500, but it is technically, as far as the end of the week goes, crossing into the positive on the MACD. And that's just, if, if you are keeping a daily summary sheet, I would not call that up or down. I would say it's sideways at this point. We shall just wait and see until that gets really stable at the beginning of the week starting Tuesday, the 5th of July. All right, let's look at what happened throughout the course of the week on the daily chart with the S&P 500. Again, lots of down movement on the week ending the 24th of June. Uh, more on Monday, the 27th of June, and then just like the total market, up candles since then, eclipsing the down movement that started on Friday after the Brexit. So, uh, and again, crossed over going up at the same time the derivative oscillator crossed over, the MACD crossed over the red signal line. So confirmed up movement on the daily chart. So continue to pay attention just what's going on, where things are, particularly with the big moves. Big money is always made on the biggest chart, which is, of course, the weekly chart for us. Now, uh, and again, just for the record, the IYY was up 0.23% for the day on Friday. The S&P 500 up 0.21. Next, we go to the Qs. What is the Qs? It's the NASDAQ 100, the technology stocks. What do we see going on there on the weekly chart? Instead of going down three weeks in a row, it's actually been going down four weeks in a row. And with all of that down movement, a confirmed crossover going down, the MACD flipped over. At the same time, the derivative oscillator did the MACD crossing through the red signal line. We actually had a confirmed down movement on the weekly chart the 24th of June. So it's been going down now for the second week. Even with the up movement and the attempt to recover from the Brexit, we do see that we are still below the red signal line. There does seem to be a converging, a coming together of the MACD and the signal line for a potential cross, but that has not happened. And the derivative oscillator has actually moved a little further down. So we have more downward momentum in the queues and a confirmed crossover going down, unlike those other two charts. And let's also check out what happened on the daily? What do we see going on there? See up movement on Monday, Tuesday, I'm sorry, down movement on Monday following, that is the 27th following the big down move, also on Friday following the Brexit, the 24th of June, and then on the 28th, 29th, 30th of June, and the 1st of July, up movement on the queues, and that up movement, whoa, just he almost exactly ended the week where things started down the prior Friday, a crossover going up actually a little later than the crossover happened with the derivative oscillator going from red to green. That happened on the 30th. The MACD did not cross the red signal line until the 1st of June, or July rather. So that's where we are as far as the cues go, still down as far as the weekly chart goes. Uh, we have, again, on the IYY, the 
total market on the weekly chart bounced off. So it is still going up and on the S&P 500, trying to cross over going up, but we're not confirming that at this point because it's just too weak a crossover on the MACD. Now, lastly on the weekly charts, what is our buddy gold up to? Gold up Friday 1.53%, at least over three times what the market indexes were. Gold up strongly. It had crossed over going up on the weekly chart back on the 24th and then surged up even higher throughout the course of the week with the derivative oscillator going positive at the end of the week on the week ending the 1st of July. Big up candle for the week. If we look at, so that is a confirmed up move on the weekly chart. If we look at the daily chart, what do we see going on? Well, the daily chart crossed over back on the 24th. The MACD didn't cross over, hardly even crossed over on the 28th of June. But we saw over the last several days on Monday, a bit of an upsurge in the in gold, continuing from what happened on Friday. Remember, gold a lot of times runs inverse to what's going on in the market. The market slumps. Gold is considered a safe haven by many investors, and it typically goes up. But what happened on Tuesday? Well, as the market started to surge on the 28th, gold dropped off, and then it slowly plotted its way up on Wednesday and Thursday, the 29th and the 30th of June. And then on Friday, it boomed up that 1.53%. So gold is in up moves on both the daily chart and the weekly chart pretty substantially. We have on our all of our charts, we have if and when we can draw a two-day trend line. We do. It's depicted by a blue line. <clears throat> it is also the movement in gold as well above that. So that is where we've ended the week. Please pay attention. Remember what we teach about these big waves, how important they are to understand because all of the smaller waves, the two-day chart and the half-day chart, the four-hour chart, tend to to move, all things else being considered in the direction of that big wave. So pay attention to those as you chart your charts throughout the course of this next shortened week, thanks to the 4th of July holiday. Now let's talk about going to the section of the podcast every week where we talk about what affected the charts over this last week and what may be affecting them in the new week starting Tuesday, the 5th of July. Well, the post-Brexit chaos started erupting across the board in the UK and all the political parties, those who had been pushing for it, of course, running for cover, well, those who had been pushing to stay in running for cover, those who had pushed to have a Brexit, that is Britain, exit the EU, well, they were shouting for joy in the streets. Now, we did see Mark Carney, who is the Bank of England governor, he came out on Thursday and said that the post-Brexit economic outlook had deteriorated. Of course, the bankers do not want to get away from the European Central Bank and then the UK do it on its own. So what do they say? Well, things look bad. There's an 85% chance of a rate cut in August, and markets are expecting a package of measures, including resumption of quantitative easing in the UK and the potential for a cut in the bank capital requirements. We shall see. And again, like we talked about, as far as the U.S. markets go after that hit that they took has recovered, and we've seen our markets zoom back up again. Now we'll see if that's a dead cat bounce, just how things will go. For those of you who are fans like I am, uh, and if you're not, you should be, of the Stock Traders Almanac, put out every year by Yale Hirsch and his son Jeff Hirsch. If you don't have one, it's only halfway through the year, go buy one at Amazon. And I really want to refer you to everything they talk about in presidential election years. In fact, one of the best indicators of where the market's going to go, according to Yale the father and Jeff the son, who have studied the markets for many, many years and chart them for us every year, helping us find patterns, is presidential 
election years typically are very good years, followed by typically very hard years. So be careful. Pay attention. Remember, we're in the summer doldrums, so don't expect the market to do a whole lot. It typically sort of lags up and down because the big money sell in May and go away. If you haven't heard that in the markets, you will. The money will come back in in the fall winter trading zone when typically things get a little better and longer moving. All right, so let's talk about other things. The Brexit prompted the UK and EU to cut credit ratings. We've seen both the EU's credit rating cut as well as uh, that's Britain's and the EU's. Both of them have seen their credit rates cut. Uh, global bond yields have continued to slide. We've seen lower credit ratings doing little to dampen the rally uh, in the UK. But what we've seen happen is that the 10-year bond fell to a record low. Get this, a record low of 0.81% during the course of this past week. And these yields in record lows, again, occurred following the Brexit referendum. And the German bond yields slipped even deeper into negative territory over the same time. Other things that occurred. Well, Puerto Rico has signed a rescue bill, and the island's government is now authorizing the suspension of debt payments, trying to work that out as they've spent themselves into bankruptcy. And just a quick aside, too, I still am amazed. Volkswagen, $15 billion settlement with U.S. emissions case. That's just unbelievable. All right, now let's talk about when the market gets going again on Tuesday, the 5th of July. What are we going to see happening as far as things reported in the news that might affect things? Well, the biggest thing is going to be the minutes from the June Federal Open Market Committee meeting. Those are going to be released on Wednesday, the 6th of July. Keep that in the back of your mind. That can either help or hurt the market. Typically, it will have some effect since, of course, we all live to be run by the central bankers. Uh, also, be aware on Wednesday, U.S. service sector PMI is going to be released. Now, the beginning of the week is going to start off on Tuesday. Just to back up a little bit, service sector purchasing managers indices, uh, managers indices are going to be released globally on Tuesday. But what you got to really watch for is Wednesday, particularly the FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee, meeting notes, minutes are going to be released. That's important. Then on Thursday, Bank of Japan uh, Governor Kodora is going to speak. And then lastly, on Friday, the U.S. Employment Report is going to be released. The biggest thing for the next week is that Fed Minute release on Wednesday. So pay attention. We know now, you know now, what's going on on the weekly charts. Make sure that you keep in mind where they are and that they are the biggest wave that typically the other smaller waves, the two-day chart and the half-day four-hour chart, will tend to move in that direction until those smaller charts are large enough to bend that big chart over. So that is where we are. Lots of good training. We just finished up a good training yesterday. We're going to be posting here over the weekend on inverse ETFs, how to make money when markets crash. I can't wait to get that one out to you. You're going to love it. If you want to know what we do at chartingwealth.com, all you need to go is to the website, chartingwealth.com. Sign up for our newsletter. With that, we will send you links to our How to Read a Stock Chart video. All of this is for free. And the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com. I have gotten a lot of emails from people not quite being able to get the free stock charts layout we use to load up on their free stock charts. That's because you guys aren't following the instructions that we send with every edition of the daily newsletter, which of course includes not only the video of what I'm doing right now, which is a screencast of all of the charts that we're looking at, but also below that are all your instructions on how to go to freestockcharts.com, get yourself a free account, and then open it, then load in our charts, our layout, and then save that. Once you do that, you're good as gold. There's nothing better than Free Stock Charts and TC2000, which is the paid-for service that you don't have to have until and unless you want it. Use the Free Stock Charts to begin with. Don't let this cost you money. It's going to cost you just a little bit of time, a few minutes a day, 
But I'm telling you, in the long term, it is the best time you're going to spend if you stick with this. Learn to read these charts. You need to be excited because you're going to find in good time, you're going to get better and better and better at reading charts, more and more comfortable at doing your virtual trades until you will, on a date certain, at some time in the future, hopefully, decide, now I know what I'm doing. I develop my own way of trading. I've taken what I've learned from chartingwealth.com, and I'm ready to go spend my own money and make this work. That's your decision. We're not a stock calling service. We are just an education firm coming to you every day the markets are open, trying to help you figure out what's going on in what appears to be a complicated, convoluted world. But when you pay attention to the charts, okay, you can then see the forest and the trees. You just don't get hung up wandering around lost. We love the charts. They're our roadmap to the future. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us hear from you. Go to everything. You can go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, our own website, chartingwealth.com. We love to hear from you. You want to help us out? Go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Say something about us. Sign up for both of our podcasts, both the weekly video podcast, the weekly review and forecast, and the daily audio that also includes an audio of the weekly. We appreciate you so much. Hope you appreciate us. Continue to subscribe at YouTube. We reach 1,000. We can start giving you proprietary broadcasts. Now we have many thousand listen every week on YouTube, but we got to reach that 1,000 mark so we can start bringing you proprietary YouTube videos. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hope the week treats you well.